Hello and welcome to Big Deal. I'm Nisha Poddar. Now, since the inception of International Financial Services Center or IFSC, well, the government has taken many steps to really make it an attractive proposition for the funds to set up shop at Gift City. Now, the recent budget announcements give a further lift to this particular space. Now, ease of doing business uh, through single window approvals and also the tax parity with other competing jurisdictions like Singapore as well as uh, Mauritius are some of the important measures taken recently. So far, Gift City has given license to over 50 fund management entities with about $11 billion that have been committed here. How's the growth from here on to make this particular concept of IFSC more robust and bring in that business for us. Let's discuss with the investors who have set up shop at Gift City. Let me welcome on Big Deal Kalpesh Jain from Multiples, Rajiv Saptrishi of Kotak Investment Advisors and Alok Mehta of Bloom Ventures. Gentlemen, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Now Kalpesh, what's the big boost that has been provided by the budget to fund uh, traction? at IFSC and also do you see it attracting more fronts from your industry? You're on mute I think Kalpesh. Sorry, uh, last five budgets uh, uh, IFSC has been getting a good space on the budget uh, uh, speech and uh, a few years have been on tax exemptions. Now uh, last two years it's been about the theme has been ease of doing business in gift city and a lot of changes uh, have been made to really make the fund set up uh, more convenient and make it operationally easier just to one example that uh, now there's a single window clearance for uh, for getting <clears throat> approvals from all the regulators be it sebi irda uh, ifsc gst and, and others so it is it is a, a quick process to get an approval uh, Second aspect is in the budget now they have combined the SEZ uh, approvals as part of IFSC process. Uh, that makes it much easier as again dealing with one more regulator there. And I would say the third more important, I think it's still to be explored, is, is, is uh, the sunset clause of uh, 2023, which was to offshore, uh, uh, get the offshore funds to uh, move to IFSC. Uh, has been extended to 25 so that's that's i think uh, three big things in the budget which has happened this year right uh, so uh, kalpesh you enumerated what all has been uh, really done by the government and ifsca as the regulator has really taken the lead in easing a lot of issues that the investors had really brought to their notice and then make it very attractive but uh, rajiv help us understand the sunset clause which has been extended do you think that there'll be traction what is holding back some of these offshore funds from relocating to India and will this extension really help in your view? Definitely. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, there has been uh, a lot of funds who have been exploring, shifting out of Singapore, Mauritius and other jurisdictions into gift. <laughs> Obviously, it's not an easy task. Uh, it's effectively unsettling whatever you've been doing for the last n number of years and trying to relocate. So it's obviously not an easy decision. Investors have been asking what is in it for them. So what I am aware of, there are quite a few number of funds who, whose redomiciliation is in pipeline, uh, but not yet completely through. And hence this extension of deadline obviously is going to help a lot. All right. So that's the positive commentary. It is going to help a lot and um, a lot of it needs to be seen over the next two years or so. But Alok uh, from Bloom Ventures, you earlier used Mauritius as the feeder destination, but you have taken that leap of faith and have set up shop at uh, the gift city. Can you enumerate what are the benefits because of which you got attracted to this? So for us, the decision was largely driven by the fact that at the point, I mean, this this is a jurisdiction which is near shore. It is offshore, on onshore. So that was a big motivator for us. The LPs were very comfortable when we presented this concept to them. Also, Nisha, what, what also happens is at the time when we were exploring or rather we were setting up our fund, Mauritius was going through FATF issues. Right. So that 
And those issues, uh, we did not want to come in way of our fundraise because these are global issues have an impact on the investors, which is where it made a lot of sense to actively evaluate and set up and give. At the same time, government has also created a very enabling infrastructure and a regulatory framework. There are tax exemptions available. The LPs are not disadvantaged as compared to a Mauritius or a Singapore. They are they they enjoy the same advantages or disadvantages that they had, especially from the point of view of a fund like ours, which is an India-owned Indian Indian fund, India-based fund. Right. That is how we thought about it when we started out. Right. And taking this particular matter forward, now, Rajiv, uh, you have committed a huge amount of money uh, in terms of your fund activity at Gift City, 1.5 billion already there and over a billion already in the pipeline. What is the scope of opportunity that you're seeing here because of this kind of commitment? And what are the few regulations which are really helping you in uh, the, the future prospects of IFSC as a destination of choice? Okay, so let's, I mean, let's look at the positives and that will give you the answer as to what uh, lies in the future. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of tax benefits, uh, if you look at, let's say, split that into benefits for investors and benefits for the manager. Uh, for the investor, definitely no PAN required. Uh, that was a, a, a big point for most investors. No filing of returns in India. Uh, you effectively get the same pass-through benefits that you would have got if you had invested in a domestic fund. Mm. Uh, technically, at the fund level, at least there is uh, enough hope and, uh, and this thing that there is no GAR applicable at a fund level. That is broadly what the industry believes. Uh, lastly, uh, you can also end up doing co-investment structures through the same fund, which is technically not possible in India today. Uh, now, what is in it for the manager? Uh, obviously, with this budget uh, change that is uh, coming up, a uh, single window, so obviously time to market is much faster. Uh, from the time you think of a fund and time you actually go and uh, set up a fund and start investing is going to be much, much faster than before. Hmm. As far as the manager is concerned, he gets a 10-year or 15-year tax holiday, which is excellent. Uh, there is no GST on management fee. There is no MAT uh, if you go with the new, new regime. Uh, one big pain point also technically is the diversification limit which applies to domestic funds. There is no such diversification limit that applies to a gift fund. And lastly, and the, I think the biggest point as far as we are concerned is the ability to take leverage, yes. uh, which currently under the domestic regulations is not permitted. Yes. And now with uh, uh, the SPV uh, structures being permitted or enabled in the IFSC regulations. Of course, the operation guidelines have not yet come out. But if that comes in, then enough and more scope for us to structure uh, a lot of funds in gift, which uh, may or may not be possible in, in the domestic area. All right. So it is giving stiff competition to uh, the domestic funds. Kalpesh, uh, throw more light on especially the leverage uh, fund uh, that um, Rajiv spoke about of raising debt and using it for investments. How does that really make sense for a fund manager like yourself? Yeah, so uh, overall a fund manager would like to increase the returns and uh, debt as a component as part of investing always uh, makes a lot of difference. Uh, uh, in India, the regulations are such that uh, you're not allowed to uh, take a leverage at the fund level or even at a SPV level, which uh, which now at an IFSC level, considering that the investor uh, coming in at IFSC would be more sophisticated and largely institutional investors. So this has been allowed uh, at a fund level or to an SPV level. Uh, this would make uh, uh, at least the returns, I would say, almost about a higher by about a, a 200 to 300 bips uh, higher for the for the investor right and uh, for you uh, alok what is it uh, that is the most beneficial bit and people also talk about angel tax which was really the burning topic uh, of discussion now given the present context uh, with ifc ifsc how is that particular area looked out and sort solved for Nishad, the, the union budget brought about a change in angel tax and it is now applicable for non-residents as well. 
So if at all that was an angle that has gone away, so that is no more, uh, you know, plus if someone would, were to set up at a offshore jurisdiction, including IFSC, so that's not a, that's not a lever anymore, at least unless there are some changes which, which come about, which is what industry is representing and asking for. Yes. But that's obviously uncertain. All so right. that, that, that is not an angle at all, but uh, as Rajiv mentioned, Right, the GAR continues to be a major decision driver. I believe that would be the case for all the Indian managers. Yes. At the same time, tax benefits are available, and it, I mean, but that is more for the manager and LPs are agnostic to that to that extent. Yeah. And even for them, it is it is a easier jurisdiction to deal with as compared to coming directly into India, which they have been avoided. Right. Uh, so, so far we have discussed, gentlemen, what is the benefit that IFSC really provides and what is attractive here. But what more needs to be done and what are the issues that need to be addressed by the government and IFSCA to make it a destination of choice for more fund managers like yourself? We'll discuss that and more on Big Deal when we return after a very short break. Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are discussing the scope of robustness of Gift City and especially after the momentum that has been provided by the government measures, especially during the union budget. Now, um, we were discussing what are the benefits of IFSC and how it has been made attractive by the authority as well as the government. Rajiv, help us understand, are you as... Um, uh, one of the fund management entities able to benefit from all the tax benefits that have been provided under IFSCA or are there some structuring as well as layering aspects that still need to be sorted for? No, I think most of the tax benefits that have already come in, yes, most of them will be of benefit to us and to investors as well. Uh, Layering, as I said earlier, if the SPV structure really comes in, that will help us a lot in terms of structuring, leveraging, co-investment structures. Uh, instead of putting it in the same fund, we can actually create a vehicle where we can do co-investment structures. So a lot of things that are in the pipeline at the gift end will definitely end up helping us in the future. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, we missed out in this budget and since you're talking about a lot of things that came in the budget. Uh, one expectation that we had as an industry and one of the asks that was there from the industry was uh, unified taxation for all categories, which hasn't really come in. So if that comes in, then life is going to be much, much smoother going forward. All right. So that is the big ask uh, and more clarity on the structuring will emerge over time. Alok Mehta, what else can be done? Are there any roadblocks uh, in fully benefiting from this opportunity, according to you? There has been great regulatory intent and effort right. so far. Right. IFSC was notified in 2015. It is only now that we are seeing all this action happen. At the same time, uh, the gaps that we see, are essentially around coordination of various laws. For example, this entire issue of relocation of funds or rather re-domiciling of funds to India. Hmm. Now, there are tax provisions which are still a bit ambiguous on how, how these kind of uh, you know transfers would be taxed in hands of the managers. Yes. For that matter, in case of non-residents. Yes. Right. So, so there is a lot of on-ground coordination between various regulators, various ministries, which would definitely help in making the regulation more effective. Yes. So that's exactly what union budget um, seemed to provide for also, Alok. So Kalpesh, uh, jump in on this one. The single window clearance and right after the budget, I had interviewed Injeti Srinivas of IFSCA and he stated that uh, in less than six months, a single window clearance will be done where all the regulators, uh, you know, approvals will be sought through one window. How will it really work out and how optimistic are you of this really bringing in ease of that transfer of assets from offshore accounts? Yeah, I, I think, uh, uh, yes, it's a, it needs to be tested, frankly. Uh, but uh, uh, knowing at the speed what uh, IFSC has worked on various regulations and set up uh, related issues, uh, I'm very optimistic that uh, this would be a success. Uh, in fact, uh, they've been discussing this with various associations and 
uh, on how to integrate all this, including various issues at each regulator level, how needs to be taken care. So, uh, I, and uh, they have been integrating uh, uh, with, they will be integrating this with, with some robust IT systems as well with various regulators. So, uh, it still could be about uh, six months away uh, to have this final single window clearance in place. My sense is that, uh, but I'm very optimistic that this will work out well. And uh, what about uh, acquisition financing? Any of you looking at that particular aspect in a big way or some of the other products as well that have been brought about in the budget in the last few years? Uh, Rajiv, any uh, word on that, the future of opportunities that could be expected from you? So obviously it sets us thinking about how we can actually use this because domestically acquisition financing is not permitted. So obviously we have started thinking of how to actually use this particular facility. Of course, we'll wait for the fine print to come in. But yes, this gives us a window of opportunity for setting up another kind of a strategy that can be used to you know, set up a fund. Right. And uh, uh, what are you hearing, Alok, from the other industry members? Are they looking at setting up shop uh, over here at IFSC and what's holding them back? What What's the consensus that is building up? And after this union budget, do you think anything has changed? Interestingly, we have had like two of our institution, large institutional investors right. have conversations, understanding more about setting up in IFSC a the pros and cons around various other jurisdictions. I would say they are in a stage between, I mean, they've crossed the stage of curiosity. They are yet to reach the stage of serious interest. They're somewhere in between. But there is a lot of interest which is there. People are actually evaluating these options. The union budget, and even, even prior to the budget, there have been a lot of uh, simplifications, lots of new initiatives, which IFSC came out with. For example, setting up a separate, you know, uh, regulation for family offices who set up structures and gift. That could be a great source of private capital for it, flowing into India via gift. Right. So there is definitely interest and that momentum should pick up now. Right. Uh, the momentum should pick up. Uh, but uh, Kalpesh, do you think the single window clearance timeline wise will give competition to other jurisdictions in ease of getting approvals and setting up shop here? Uh, I, I think, uh, uh, first of all, for any uh, investment which has to come to India, uh, uh, I feel this is the best location to be in. Single window clearance uh, more is for uh, setting up the fund. I think uh, without even single window clearance as of now, uh, the process has been pretty streamlined between various regulators. It will only become easier. So competition-wise, I would feel uh, IFSC is much ahead vis-a-vis -vis other jurisdiction now uh, for if, if the money has to come to India. Uh, so I don't see uh, uh, impact of that vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis any other jurisdiction. But uh, more importantly, I think uh, what also is important when, when you do a comparison of various jurisdiction, uh, the policies which have been implemented, uh, everyone just has a worry that whether that doesn't change or it doesn't go back to something else and creates an issue. Yes. Uh, the worry which, which you know, a lot of uh, investors have when they evaluate this location. Uh, uh, so uh, while a lot of confidence has been given by the authorities that, uh, 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 you know, uh, at least from their intent and uh, discussions, uh, but this is always there as a you know, back of mind that is there any issues which could have at a later stage because we would run a fund for a 10 years and if anything happens in the last three years then our returns actually could get, get impacted. So so that's a worry which would be there and uh, that's where I think uh, we we may lose out uh, certain marks on on vis-a-vis -vis other, other jurisdictions. All right. Well pointed out, actually, Kalpesh, because, you know, policy flip-flop has been one of the biggest concerns for investors into India or India set up uh, platforms like IFSC. Uh, Raji, what do you think? Uh, can this be addressed? Because it's more of a perception issue. But then time and again, our government has also uh, come up with regulations like we are seeing currently in the REITs in which side where budget had thrown a tax proposal, which actually changed 
changes the dynamics of returns. So when you invest, you bake in a certain kind of return and investors always say that uh, we would rather bake in a higher index of taxation rather than go into it blindfolded and deal with flip-flop in the policy. How to address this particular issue and is this one of the single largest issues which is a roadblock in the IFSC becoming a much more robust platform? I'll, I'll start on the reverse end. <clears throat> if you look at what do we get in Singapore versus India, I think almost everything that you will probably get in Singapore, be it now good infrastructure, regulatory, uh, easy regulations, clarity on taxation, leverage, you name it and you've got it. The single biggest factor that may technically end up taking uh, as far as I, if, a, if a foreign investor is concerned, his single biggest concern always is about stability of tax and other regulations. Now, if you ask me what can be done, I don't have an answer, to be honest. But the issue is that we've created history in, in various, uh, in the past, about making changes retrospectively. Even if that can stop, if you look at the Vodafone case as well, now, that obviously sets in a lot of fear in the minds of investors. Now, it is up to the government to kind of come out with clarity and give a confirmation or an assurance or a guarantee that whatever is being done will never undergo a change. And that has to be only proven by actions. Right. Only words will not help. All right. So trust deficit on the policy flip-flop front is one of those perception issues that the government as well as IFSCA probably needs to uh, really address to make IFSC a much more robust platform. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Big Deal. Thank you so much, uh, Rajiv, Alok, as well as Kalpesh, for joining us with your insights on this special edition on IFSC and how robust can it get. Thanks to all our viewers for tuning in. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18.